Nature has provided us with some remarkable species. This video describes the amazing life cycle of the northern elephant seal. To look at them stretched out on this beach, you probably just conclude they are big and that the adult males have large noses, reminiscent of an elephant's nose. But there's a lot more to their life story. Elephant seals can be found on beaches along the western Mexican and California coasts and also out in some islands. We'll spend our time at a beach halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco along a rugged coastline. As you can see, these are large blubbery animals. Up through the early 20th century, elephant seals were heavily hunted for their blubber, which was used for oil in lamps and as a lubricant. The surviving populations of seals dropped to about 50 individuals on a remote Mexican island. Extinction was imminent. But then Mexico declared them a protective species. So from these few individuals in the early 1900s, the population has grown to a quarter of a million today. The northern elephant seal has an intriguing life cycle. It comes ashore for a month at a time, twice a year. In the winter months, the females come ashore to give birth. The pups are born just a few days after the female hauls herself up on the beach. Then, for the next month, the female nurses her pup. The mother's milk is rich in fat. It reaches 60%. It has the consistency of mayonnaise. In comparison, human milk is 2 to 4% fat. Cow's milk is about 4% fat. So pups feed on very high fat content milk. As a result, pups double their weight in 11 days and quadruple their weight in 22 days. They get up to 300 pounds in 22 days. During this one month on land, the females fast. They don't eat and they lose 30 to 40 percent of their body weight. At the end of this one month on land, the females head out to sea, leaving their babies on shore. The pups need a few months to learn how to swim and hunt, and then they too head out to sea. By then, the pups have lost lots of weight and need to find food. Now, the pups are born a few days after the mother arrives on shore, often at night. The seagulls congregate at the birth site and eat the placenta. The pups are so small and inept that it takes them a while to find the right place to nurse the mother. If the female is a good mother, it may roll over to expose her belly to her pup. The mother identifies her pup at birth and, in general, will only allow her pup to feed. If a pup loses her mother, like this one, it will starve if it doesn't find its real mother. Generally, other females will reject any pup that is not theirs. The pups, being small, are susceptible to being crushed by the bull seals which come crashing through the rookery. About 10% of the pups don't survive their first month on land. 
Now, the males who develop these big noses as they enter puberty about the age of four arrive on the beach before the females arrive. The adult males want to claim territory and collect the harem of females. At the end of the females' one-month stay on land, the females are receptive to impregnation. The males are three times larger than the females. The males look as if they're physically attacking the much smaller females when they are intent on impregnation. His courtship is more like a quick strike. The male comes alongside the female, throws his flipper over her to hold her down, and then bites her on the back of the neck. She may protest, but he is much larger. The bull seals compete for females, and the males often fight to maintain their territory. Most of these fights appear to be bluster, but some draw blood, as you can see in this elephant seal. You've probably noticed that the elephant seal is a bit awkward moving on land. They move forward by raising their front flippers to lift their body, then lunging their hindquarters forward. This actually can result in their moving quite fast. If motivated, elephant seals can outrun a human. So the bull seals arrive before the first females arrive, and leave after the last females leave. Typically, the bull is on the beach for three months without eating. It loses a third of its body weight during this time. And he certainly tries to conserve energy as much as possible. So, at the end of the one month stay on land, the females head out to sea to forage for food to replenish their bodies. And their pups stay on land, living off the fat they've been eating, and eventually they learn how to swim and how to dive for food. When the pups finally leave the beach, they never associate with their mothers again. Then the males set out to sea to look for food. Not a lot is known about the life of an elephant seal in the ocean. They seem to be loners. They've been tracked with responders and they swim thousands of miles up toward Alaska to feed. Yes, I said thousands of miles. Their feeding style is to surface for air where it breathes rapidly and the oxygen gets into its muscles. Then the seal exhales about half the air from its lungs and starts its dive. As it descends, its lungs collapse and the rest of the air is driven out of their lungs. This way it does not suffer from the bends as it returns to the surface. It basically coasts down to a deep depth using very little energy. They routinely dive a thousand to three thousand feet below sea level. They stay underwater an average of 25 minutes before returning to the surface to take on air. In fact, they spend 90% of their time at sea deep underwater. The typical female follows this schedule 24 hours a day while at sea for three to four months. I don't have any video of this behavior and I don't think anyone else does either. Surprisingly, after being at sea for months, the elephant seals return to the beach for another month of just lying around and not eating. 
This time, they've come ashore to molt. The elephant seal must come back to land to grow new skin and new hair because the seals do not circulate blood next to their skin while they're in the ocean. They do not grow new skin and new hair cells continuously as we humans do. While they're on the beach during their molting season, the air around them is much warmer than the ocean water. Their blood then circulates next to the skin and new skin and hair is grown. The old skin and hair is shed. They can look very ratty, sick-like, during this second time they come ashore for a month. During this period, the seals live much closer together than they did during their month ashore during their birthing period. After molting on the beach, and again not eating, the elephant seals head back out to sea, swim thousands of miles, and dive continuously for food, replenishing their body weight. Then, the cycle starts all over again, and the females return to the beach to give birth. If you're lucky enough to see elephant seals, perhaps you'll be a bit more appreciative of their amazing adaptation, their ability to live equally well on both water and land. They're not just mountains of blubber that look like rocks on the beach that they are among the deepest diving mammals on Earth, that they have learned to go for long periods of time without eating, that the elephant seal lives a solitary life while at sea, and that the seals come ashore for a month, twice a year, once during birthing and once for molting. These are indeed unusual creatures.